My husband and I had been in marriage counseling for five long years. I'm pretty sure we put our therapist three kids through college. You would think we had it figured out by then, but one day our therapist surprised me. He said, Jane, I have to tell you, your anger and depression don't match the circumstances. Is there something else we don't know about? I crossed my legs, I looked at the floor, and I said, my brother sexually abused me. Have you ever been stuck in an awkward conversation at a party with someone and you couldn't figure out how to get rid of them? Well, unfortunately, I have the opposite problem. People ask, what do you do? I take a deep breath and I say, I'm a full-time advocate for survivors of sibling sexual abuse. At that point, <laughs> at that point, their eyes start darting around the room, nervously looking for the nearest exit. I get it. It's an uncomfortable subject, and because of that, no one is talking about it. There's a good chance you've never heard of sibling sexual abuse. In many ways, sibling sexual abuse, or SSA for short, is the last taboo subject. No one wants to talk about it, and too few people are studying it. This means countless children, parents, and communities are suffering, alone and unheard, without guidance, support, or even empathy. It's a silent epidemic. That's why we need to help survivors share their stories in order to build a community of people who can demand new research and solutions. So, what is sibling sexual abuse? Well, it's murky. Because of its secrecy and lack of research, even the experts can't agree. Forty years ago, when it happened to me, I thought, only adults can sexually abuse kids. Even today, many parents and kids still believe the same thing. What we do know is it involves a wide range of unwanted sexual behaviors between children, including siblings, step-siblings, cousins, and older adolescents. Think babysitters or perhaps your child's best friend's older brother or sister. Parents don't even have enough awareness of SSA to know that they need to prevent it. And then if they discover it, they can't find any information on what steps can be taken, what to do. And because of the ambiguity, parents often excuse the abusive behavior of one child toward another as normal. Kids will be kids. To be clear, curiosity in children is normal. But where is the line? Parents don't know, and worse, they can't find the answers. When your kid sticks a marble up their nose, what do you do? You Google it. And in 0.5 seconds, one million results appear, sharing articles between doctors and parents debating the latest marble nose removal techniques. Yet five years ago, I Googled sibling sexual abuse, and what popped up was three outdated articles from 10 years ago. Even today, the third search result is, is sibling abuse a thing? I thought I was alone, but I also knew I couldn't be the first or only person on the planet who had experienced this. Today, thousands of people message me to share their stories. I hear from survivors, people who have caused harm, and parents. And every message starts the same. I thought I was alone. I thought I was alone. Parents want to help their children, but don't know where to turn for assistance. When there's no one to turn to, you might try to ignore it, handle it at home by yourself, or hide it altogether. And when that happens, no one can heal. The victim, the sibling who caused harm, or the family. So the abuse continues. Let's dive a little deeper and start with the victims. 
Sibling sexual abuse is three to five times more common than father-daughter incest. That means every time you hear one news story about a father sexually abusing his daughter, there are at least three stories of SSA that you will never hear about. SSA typically starts at a much earlier age than other forms of sexual abuse. In fact, the average duration of sibling sexual abuse is six years. World War II started and ended in less time. Victims start to feel like there's something wrong with them. Failed attempt after failed attempt to be heard or understood makes them feel like it was their fault. Many choose to suffer in silence rather than risk getting their sibling in trouble or disrupting the family. Others are being threatened or coerced by a sibling and are fearful of speaking up. And that leads to destructive behavior. It can show up as low self-esteem, anger, or self-harm. You've heard the saying, time heals all wounds. Not in this case. For me, instead of going to college, I decided to become a stripper. I thought I could regain control that way. It was empowering, but it was temporary. Turns out you can only use sex, drugs, and men to numb the shame for so long. Eventually, I managed to pry myself from the stage, thinking, I've moved on. Unfortunately, it would take decades to realize I had only masked my pain. Every survivor is different. Some fall into abusive relationships as adults, many suffer serious sexual issues, and others develop eating disorders. But we all have one thing in common. We feel alone. So that's the victims, but what about the sibling who caused harm? For every survivor hiding in the shadows, there may be another child or former child who is living with hidden guilt, is in denial, or has no idea the harm they caused. I was 21 when my brother said to me, I'm sorry for what I did to you when you were little. I froze. And then I said to him, it's okay, I participated, because I believed I was complicit. See, it's murky even for the person who was directly violated. It took me 20 more years of living with embarrassment and shame, but in my 40s, after careful consideration and lots of therapy, I finally wrote him a letter of forgiveness. His response? I had no idea this was still on your mind. I thought it was over. The destruction to families is greater than the sum of its parts. Parents say, we talk to our kids about stranger danger, but never siblings. We didn't even know this was a thing. The truth is, juveniles themselves are responsible for 40% of all child sexual abuse. And when I tell parents that, they often say, I thought our family was one in a million. I thought we were alone. Mothers and fathers struggle to support and care for both children and often feel though, as though they have to choose one child over the other. Many marriages don't survive, and the family structure may never be the same for those who do. In theory, I have forgiven my brother, but it's not like our families gather for the holidays, hanging around by the fire, drinking hot cocoa and sharing stories. That's not in the cards for us at least not yet, but it could be for the next family that SSA affects, if people were talking about it. The first step towards preventing sibling sexual abuse is the awareness that it can occur in any family. Once families understand that, they can receive guidance, treatment, and counseling. Studies show when it is handled promptly and correctly, it's unlikely to occur again. But first, we need additional research so that we can learn how to define it, talk about it, and prevent it. Here in the United States, SSA has not been studied widely or recently, but in the UK, an organization called the Rape Crisis England and Wales recently conducted a national study on sibling sexual abuse. They are clear on two actions that should be taken now. 
One, sibling sexual abuse should be recognized as the most common form of child sexual abuse. And two, the voices of the children, parents, and adults affected by sibling sexual abuse need to be heard and fully acknowledged. Now, as desperate as the situation is, there is hope. Thanks to the Me Too movement and the high-profile survivors who have come forward in recent years, society is more cognizant of sexual abuse in general. Me Too has a hashtag, and it changed the world. But where is our hashtag? Where is our support group? Well, that's up to us. So what can we do? What can you do? To those in the media, invite survivors of SSA like you would any other survivor to share their stories and normalize talking about it. If you're on the board of a school, propose an educational session for parents on the reality of SSA. Are you a counselor or a social worker? Raise awareness in discussions with your clients and colleagues. And if you're a member of a community, any community, support us when we share our hashtag. Become part of a movement, a groundswell that will change the lives of millions the way Me Too did. That day in the therapist's office, I shed my layers of shame and I dropped a bombshell on my husband, Steve. He sat quietly for a moment, and I thought about all the things someone in his position might say. Why didn't you tell me? That was a long time ago. You should move on. But when he finally spoke, he said, I'm sorry that happened to you. I was no longer alone. I'm very lucky to have a Steve, someone who hears me and supports me, but most survivors of sibling sexual abuse do not. But if we ring this bell loud enough, we can demand the research and education required to make things better. Our children deserve it. And if you're a survivor, I hear you, I believe you. You are not alone. <laughs>